So here in Final Cut Pro 10.3, we're gonna have a look at the touch bar and some of the functionality you get when you're working with a touch bar that's come out on the new MacBook Pros. So we've got an emulator for the touch bar that you can see down at the bottom here. And I currently have the libraries at the top left of my screen here highlighted. So on the touch bar down at the bottom here, you can see the options it's giving me is to import media to create a new event and to create a new project. So just some simple shortcuts to my library and project management. So if I click the import button, we're gonna get the same options that we have up in the main window. So that we can have a look at some of the new features, we're gonna grab a little bit of footage from here. So I'm gonna grab this folder and import it. And I've got some footage here of a trip to Dinosaur Park in Alberta, Canada. And we're just gonna go ahead and use some of this footage to demo uh, some of the different features that we have with the touch bar. So you can see here now that I'm navigating my media, um, I can move to the beginning of my clip, to the end of my clip. I've got an option to clear the selection. And I've also got an option here, which is gonna change the view from thumbnail view to list view. So I can flip nicely between those views. So it's avoiding having to go to any hidden menus to find those different things. I've also got some options here for adjusting the audio levels. So if we just change the clip view, so it's showing the waveforms, you can see here that when I'm adjusting that sound level, it's actually adjusting the sound level of my clip or setting it to silent. So we're modifying elements of the clip that we've got selected up here um, using the touch bar. If I click the small cross to the left here, it's gonna close that particular feature. I can click on the info for the clip and it's gonna bring the info for the clip up on the top right of my screen. So I can quickly find out things like the resolution, the frame rate, audio rate, um, and that type of thing for my footage. And then if I've marked in and out points, I've got the option to clear the selection um, that I've already made. So I can quickly move to the beginning and end of the clip and clear the selection um, using the touch bar. Now, if we click back on our library here, we can now click to create a new event, but we'll go ahead and create a new project and look at some of the features we get when we're working with the, the timeline and the touch bar. So I'll just call this touch bar demo. And so now if I select a clip here, I'm gonna drag it down to the, the timeline. I'll drag a couple of clips down here. Okay, so we've got a few uh, clips in Final Cut Pro 10 here. We can rejig them, but let's have a look at what changes on the touch bar here now. So we've got options in the touch bar to select the tool that we want. So the trim tool, the selection tool, the trim tool, the position tool, uh, the range selection tool. So we've got quick links to all our tools. So we don't have to jump to any menus, but if we're already using shortcuts, then we're probably not gonna jump here too much or too, too much to select tools from the touch bar. Although it is useful although I could see that flowing into some editor's workflows. So then again, if we go to the, the right-hand side, we've got the levels option, so we can silence a clip, and it's silencing the, the selected clip. So as we're playing here, we can control the levels of the selected clip, okay? And we can also add ramps at the beginning and at the end of our clip to fade our clip in and out. If I close that now, and if we move a little further across, we have some of the trim tools that are available to us. So you can see as I'm moving ahead and pressing the trim tool here, it's trimming my clip to that playhead. So it's trimming the out point of the clip. If I move to the middle of this clip and click this trim option on the touch bar, it's gonna trim from the beginning of the clip and it's gonna trim here from the out point of the clip. Okay, so this is trimming to the playhead and this is trimming the out points to the playhead, okay? And if we jump to something like the position tool, then these tools will change. So it's gonna leave a slug in place. As you'll know, working with the position tool means that you don't lose any timing in the timeline. So that's always a useful tool to work with. Um, and then this tool that we have here, I'm just gonna take a couple of steps back. If I move to an edit point here, it's going to play around the playhead. Okay, so now if we click this last button, um, this button allows us to zoom in and out of the timeline. So you can see we can zoom right into the timeline on the touch bar, we can move around our timeline. Okay, so we get a nice preview of the timeline um, as we're moving around. We can see where the playhead is um, in the, the touch bar here. And if I just zoom back so I can see the entire timeline, you'll see that when we start to stack clips up here, we start to see those stacks of clips in the, in the touch bar. So we get a preview of our, so we get a thumbnail preview of our edit um, in the 
the timeline here and if we assign different roles to our clips um, so for instance for audio so if I jump up to my audio effects here okay I'm just going to drag a couple of clips down to my timeline you'll see now that when I'm looking at the preview of the edit down here it's showing me and those different colors of the clips on the timeline so I can get a sense of, of the rhythm and the flow of the edit when I'm actually looking down here at my timeline so we'll grab another clip down there if we right click on this clip we can change this to a, a different audio roll and we're going to again see in our bar here a preview of the color so we can get a sense of where our effects are where our different clips are and of the rhythm and the flow of the edits um, as we're looking at it here okay so this seems to be one of the most useful features in the touch bar final cut pro 10. now if we close this and then come across the right here you can see i'm recording in quicktime here if i click this left hand arrow we can bring up some other controls, gen more general controls for our Mac. So we've got the brightness of our screen. We can jump to a view of all the apps that we have open. Um, we can view a grid of the applications that we have on our computer. And we can move through these as well so that we can quickly open applications. And then we have the brightness of our keyboard here. And then the volume control and the ability to turn Siri on and off. So Touch Bar has a lot of different functionality within it. Okay, so that concludes my brief overview of working with a touch bar in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm pretty excited about this new feature. I think I would need to work with it a bit more to see how you can flow through an edit working with a touch bar. I'm certainly pretty locked on to my full-size keyboard for editing, so I could see the touch bar as occasionally useful, but overall, it seems like a, an interesting new feature and will certainly highlight some editing options and editing tools for those that are just starting out with editing with Final Cut Pro um, and working other other applications there certainly seems to be a lot of good functionality outside of Final Cut Pro with the touch bar and I think for a lot of editors they might find that it's something else to learn rather than something that's going to add instant value to your editing workflow having said that I'm really excited about Final Cut Pro 10.3 and it's working great for me so far and um, so this seems to have some uh, nice additional functionality that will work well in Final Cut Pro 10.3 but I'm not sure if it's really going to speed up my editing too too much thanks for watching um, I hope this is useful as an overview of how the touch bar functions in Final Cut Pro 10 and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial